Well, we read from Greek mythology that tells a story about a hunter named Narcissus. He was infatuated with his own body, and he died because of it. Well, thousands of years after that story was told, Narcissus was reborn in the form of a pro wrestler named Lex Luger. And oddly enough, Lex nearly shared the same fate as Narcissus. Wrestling fans know him as Lex Luger, the total package. This wrestling superstar spent 15 years in the ring and won the World Heavyweight Championship belt three times. His real name is Larry Fole. Lex Luger! Lex Luger quickly became one of the premier names in pro wrestling. And with that rise to the top came a lifestyle to match. It happened all so fast, so there was like a, almost literally a party every night if you wanted to. Lex was on the road sometimes 300 days a year and led a double life. He managed to keep his party life hidden from his wife and children, but had trouble separating the man from the image. In his book, Wrestling with the Devil, Lex shares how he discovered the true meaning of strength and how that would help him through his greatest challenge of all. The total package. Lex Luther is here with us right now. Lex, welcome to the 700 Club. Thank Great you, sir. You. Thank you. It's such an honor to meet you, and thank you for having me on your show. You got a German name, and Lex Luther was the one in Batman, but you didn't do Luther. You used the German pistol, Lex. We did, yes. That's how we came up with it. Very good. Luger. Yes. Yeah, well, I read your book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate that. All right. Listen, you talked about training with this Japanese guy, and you mm. did stuff that I couldn't believe. I mean, I, I you know, work out and everything, but this is unbelievable. You said you, you did 30 sets of 30 push-ups a day after you'd run five miles to get warmed up. Is that true? Yes, in the heat of the Florida, the heat and humidity, he had a what we call the torture chamber. We did this maybe a two-hour workout in there, squats and Hindu squats, all from you brought from the Orient. He was an incredible what guy. What is this Hindu squat? You, you, you had quads like oak trees. How'd you do it? <laughs> I'm glad I was trained before I went to mine. I never would have made it past his test. He wanted to test you and see if you really wanted to be a pro wrestler before he actually took you in the ring. He was a wonderful guy. But you almost killed you. I mean, I mean, 30, 30 push-ups for the average person is a huge deal. You know, drop and give me 10 is the old Marine Corps thing, or give me 20. But you did 30, then you had to do it 20 more, 29 more times. Yeah, it, was a con it was the consecutive. He, I do 30, he'd do 30. I do 30, he'd do 30. So it was back to back. So it was the accumulation, cumulative effect, so to speak. You had the best body in all of pro wrestling, right? I mean, you were. Oh, I don't know. It was subjective, but I, I yeah. definitely, I definitely, yeah, it was my, it was my calling card. Let's put it definitely, right. yes, sir. Well, I mean, you're, oh, you're so fit and buffed and all the rest of it. But look, the whole thing is a theatrical show. How can you get to be champion if it's a show? I mean, you were the champion, but how did you get that way? Well, there's these people much smarter than I that determine these things based on crowd reaction. They actually follow the ratings. During the the shows when you're out there, do they go up or down when you walk out there? Um, how do the how do the crowds react to you? The fans really do pick the stars. But it doesn't have anything to do with beating people. I mean, your championship usually the team it, wins and beats another, but that's not the case. Wrestling here. is scripted. It's it's entertainment. Yes, it's, sir. So somebody would come at you and he'd be you know glowering and and they'd come off the ropes and 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 it was all a, a, all a, an act. Hopefully yes, it was. Hopefully it was. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we get mad at each other and there things went wrong, but for the most part we worked there in a spirit of cooperation. It's dangerous enough when it's not. Yes, sir. Are you all friends? I mean, these guys. I mean, you screamed and yelled at each other, but it was all all put up. You had to be nasty to one another. Yes, right? sir. You couldn't be friendly. Mm -hmm. you, you got to on be, camera. You were friendly with Hong Kong and said nice things, and, and they jumped all over you. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of fun. I mean, it, it is a form of entertainment. We are, we are mostly all friends outside of the ring, and it was the wrestling part of my life was wonderful. I had 15 years, traveled all over the world, met incredible people, saw incredible things. That part of my life was fantastic. Wrestling fans are great. The events are fun. It, it's a lot of fun. What? I mean, don't these fans know that it's theatrical? Or do, I mean, what is it? I mean, Most of them do. I had a little old lady in South Carolina in Columbia always try to hit me with her cane every time ringside. So yeah. some, for some, it was still real. So anybody out there, I've spoiled it for, I'm sorry. Well, all that stuff with chairs, they beat chairs over them and throw people out of the ring. I mean, that, that's real. That's yeah, real. Yeah, we get injured all the time. It's definitely not a, not a desk job. It's, uh, you can't... Uh, Pretend to go through a table to a cement floor. I mean, we land and get hurt all, 
all the time. We try to protect each other in there, but we get injured all the time. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, somehow along the way, somebody got killed. You got did time. What, what happened? Well, that was, uh, I had been living the double life, which we did in the lead in. I uh, right. was making a lot of bad choices. You know, the universal principle, we reap what we sow. Right, right. And eventually our sins shall come find us, Numbers 32, verse 23. That's what it said. And we, uh, it all came raining down on me. I had a mistress. I was leading a double life, and unfortunately and tragically, her name was Miss Elizabeth, and she died of a drug overdose in my arms at a secret townhouse I had. But they blamed separate you. Separate from my family. They thought you'd killed her. They did, based on, on, on my, my lifestyle the time and everything. They, they looked into it. I, that wasn't the case, but at first, it had everything, everybody thought that, that I had, had played a role. But indirectly, I did, you know, but talk about we reap what we sow. I was yeah. leading a lifestyle, making so many bad decisions with drugs, yeah. alcohol. Did I, did I make her take drugs and alcohol? But no, we have an influence on those around us. Of course we do. And that influence, I feel, definitely played a role in her death, no doubt. So I do have some responsibility. Well, you went to prison, and then they gave, put you on parole, and then they got you for parole vi violation. What did you do? Well, I just wasn't listening. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was, uh, didn't have accountability to anyone at that point in my life. And I thought I had a, a sense of, I had a sense of entitlement, so I didn't, didn't have to obey all the rules. And I kept on getting locked back up for my drug charges I was convicted of. And until it was the point where uh, finally one last time I was in jail and I met a jail chaplain. That, that changed my life forever. You were so pretty, though. You were the pretty boy. You were prettier than anybody. <laughs> I don't know about pretty, but <laughs> definitely, had, definitely had the look that wrestling liked at the time, yeah. yes. <laughs> and you had fans standing uh, 10 deep waiting to get your autograph and everything. Yeah, wrestling is very popular. It yeah, is that popular. can be hard to handle. When yeah. I was lost, when you're lost and not standing upon the rock, you're on the sand, that can be very difficult to handle because, I mean, the first time I read Ecclesiastes about chasing fame yeah. and fortune and glamour, he took a psalm and called it, like trying to grasp the wind. It's what it was. I cried the first time I read it because I go, that was my whole life for 47 years. All right, so a guy comes and, uh, but uh, you had an injury. Uh, you're still suffering from one that yes, they sir. thought you were going to be a paraplegic. You're going to be paralyzed for life. What, what, yes, what, sir. what happened? Was that wrestling or something else? It was a result of my wrestling and football career cumulatively over yeah. the years. And I, and I was still training real heavy on the weights. I injured my spinal cord. A C5, C6, and they said I was going to be paralyzed Doing from the neck down. Weights. Yeah, working out. And I sat in an airplane, my head turned, and I cut the blood flow off to my central spinal cord up in my neck area. And uh, I woke up the next morning in the hotel room, paralyzed from neck down. And thankfully, uh, the way the story goes, I, was, I had been saved for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and God comforted me in that room because I was there and was panicking. I couldn't breathe. And God relaxed me and comforted me. And even that journey, you know, we talk about it as, you know, it would all be a bed of roses as a believer, but there's yeah. thorns on sometimes too. And sure. the wind blows and rains on us all, even as believers. And it's not that bad stuff might not happen to us, but now God, you have God in your life to lead you through and walk you through it. And he touched you. He touched yeah, that. He did in that room and in my recovery, I was given a zero to 5% chance of any movement from <laughs> neck down. I was going to need 24 hour care to be fed, bathed, my teeth brushed. And I live on my own. I drive my own car. I... I'm most of the time very mobile. I can walk for short distances. I'm so thankful for the supernatural recovery God's given me well, so far. You're the wild man. You were the wild child. You tore up rooms. You had a mistress. You had all this stuff. And then somehow in prison, a, a guy, what was his name? Steve, I think it was, mm -hmm. leaves a book. Gives you he a actually book. left the Bible. Left the Bible. I, did, I tried reading it and it didn't make any sense to me. Well then, time. well, then how'd you find it? When I got out of jail, he pursued me yeah. and looked in every, we were both in Atlanta at the time, Atlanta, Georgia, and he, and he came to every gym in Atlanta and hunted me down, said he wanted me to work him out and train him. Yeah. And uh, we started, I started training him at the gym. Everyone wondered, what's Lex doing hanging out with the pastor no. and a jail chapel? And then we became friends. And he did what I didn't realize at the time was he just became my friend. And we know that now as relational testimony. Mm -hmm. And I started asking questions about God and church and religion. Yeah. And eventually I saw a tract in his car that said God's simple plan of salvation. I swiped that track out of his car and eventually I asked him about that track. And he walked me right through the Romans Road and to, to salvation in a hotel room on April 23rd of 06. And my life has supernaturally seen. changed ever since. Praise God. Yes, sir. And now so you're thankful. speaking, living for the Lord. Absolutely. Lex, it's great to have you Thank with you. us. This book, I hope, well, ladies and gentlemen, is quite a story. Wrestling with the Devil, uh, Mr. Adonis, whatever, Narcissus, whatever you want to say.
uh, the, the prettiest boy in all of pro wrestling. Those fans, though, I, I, as I, I was telling when I was a little kid, I may be eight or nine years old, they took me to a pro match. It was uh, the Greek Adonis versus Dropkick Harry. I don't know if you've ever heard of those famous I wrestlers. have. You have? Yes, sir. Well, they were wrestling. Legends. And Dropkick Harry, this woman behind me, kick him in the head. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean please, you know, you're supposed to be a sweet little lady. <laughs> <laughs> they go crazy. They do. We have some of those vociferous, uh, excitable fans on the, on the planet. They're great. Well, I hope your fans will follow your latest round, which is your fight with the devil and your victory in Jesus. Lex, it's Thanks. great to have you with us. Thank you, sir. It's an honor beyond. Well, Thank God you. God bless to meet you. you. Lex Luger, ladies and gentlemen, the truth from behind the scenes about professional wrestling.